Welcome back to an exciting video. And what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna talk about inversions for your piano playing. Originally this piano, this uh, lesson was going to be on video, tutorial, whatever the hell you wanna call it. This was actually going to be on arpeggios because arpeggios are a very integral part of playing music, especially on a piano. And because you don't want to get stuck in a situation where you're just constantly playing everything out to a quarter note or a 16th note or whatever have you with just a, a normal boring pattern all the time. But then I got to thinking about arpeggios. I actually saw a video um, the other night where uh, somebody was talking about arpeggios. And I noticed what they were doing is they were showing you um, they were showing you guys how to play arpeggios in different types of arpeggios like going up, going down, you know, rocking back and forth. But they were doing it all from the root position. And I thought, well, that's that's more of a hindrance than a help because you can't play everything from a root position because it's never going to sound right. If I'm playing this, for instance, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's really not. You see how my hand is moving down. If I'm starting up here, I want to say minor, I'm going to an F. Then I'm jumping down to a C, then I'm jumping down to a G. Well, there may be instances where that works, but the problem is, is you really don't have any commonality between the notes. Granted, a lot of these uh, chords will share the same note, but what do I mean by the commonality of a note? Well, if you're using inversions, you can kind of keep your playing in a, in, in a single place instead of having to move from here all the way down to here. We can keep it in more of a centralized area and we can use some common notes that will help strengthen our melody. What do I mean by that? Well, if we take that same progression and we play it and we use inversions instead of playing everything in the root position, it kind of changes how everything sounds. Now, if I do the same thing with inversions, now I'm not using my sustain pedal, Everything sounds a little more cohesive because we're not having these big jumps in between. And it really helps when you start using inversions because like I said, you can start using these, these constant tones throughout. And this is what I'm talking about here. And if you notice right here, my hand didn't really move, but I'm playing this E and I'm keeping this constant tone, which is kind of tying all my chords together. And let me continue on. And by me using inversions and being able to keep everything in one centralized area, you can hear how I'm using these two notes to constantly tie everything together, which in the first three chords was the E, and in the last chord to the D. And that will also give my song, it will help me vocally, because playing that gives me a little more sense of melody than just having a... It really doesn't give me a lot a, a big sense of melody as opposed to having these droning notes now they're not really droning because they're not continuing on because i'm using my sustain pedal as opposed to a guitar when you're hitting an open note and letting it bleed throughout the chords but without inversions well that's literally impossible you cannot do this without playing inversions and i've covered inversions and i know i've gone over in previous videos and i've really done it on guitar mostly but i don't think i've ever really gotten into inversions on the piano so to keep this simple and 
short, which is amazing because none of my videos are ever short. <laughs> And there goes R2-D2 letting me know that one of my friends are trying to get in touch with me, but oh well, they can wait. So, there's a very simple exercise we're going to do, and this is a 1-4-5 exercise. And the premise of this is not playing the 1 chord, the 4 chord, and the 5 chord, which just happens to be all major chords. And if you don't really know a whole lot about theory, skip back through my channel because I've got tons of stuff on theory because I am an advocate of the fact that until you understand how this works, you're wasting your time doing any of it. And I, and I don't mean don't start playing. Go ahead and start playing, but you have to learn the theory. You have to know why you're doing what you're doing. So, like I said, this isn't an exercise in one, four, five. This is an exercise in hitting all of the inversions. So I'm gonna show you what the inversions are real quick. So if we go to C, C major, as you know, no sharps, no flats, all white keys. If we play a C, we have a root a third fifth. Root, third, fifth. Now this is our root position. If we're going to play the next chord, we're playing the same chord, but we're playing the first inversion of this chord. All we're doing is taking this bottom note and in this case, the C, and we're moving it to the top. So this becomes this. And as you can see, it's the same exact chord. We have our root, our third, and our fifth. Now, this is the first inversion. Root, first inversion. So if we're gonna play the second inversion of the same chord, all we do again is we take our bottom note, which in this case is an E, and we move it to the top. And now we have this. This is our second inversion of the C root chord. So we have our root, our first inversion, and our second inversion. Now, if there's one thing that I could teach anybody on playing the piano, the very first thing I would teach them is how to play inversions. Because you can't spend your whole life doing this. You're missing so much of music by playing everything in the root position. And it kind of goes back to guitar. If you spend all your time playing the open cowboy chords, you're missing the entire point of playing a guitar. Same thing on the piano. You have to branch out. So it's critical to learn the inversions. So this is a little exercise. When I took piano, this is one of the things we had to learn. And we had to learn it with both hands. I'm just gonna show you one hand. It did not complicate the issue. You can figure the other hand out for yourself. Once you understand how one hand works, the other hand works the same way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start this in the, what position is this? If we have first, root, first, second. So we're starting this in the second position. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from the second position of C to the first position of F. Back to the second position of C to the root position of G. Back to the uh, second position of C. So we have, what we're, the chords we're playing are C, F, C, G. Those are the three chords. And if you notice, with the C being our one chord, if we go up four, our four chord is our F, which is a perfect fourth of C. If we go to our five chord, our five chord is G, which is a perfect fifth of C. So these are the three major chords in the scale of C major. And like I said, this isn't so much a one, a one, four, five exercise as it is an inversion exercise. But it's kind of nice to get your ear thinking in this because everything you're playing here is a major chord. And this will really start driving home that major tonality playing it. So it doesn't matter which uh, key we're playing in, it all works the same. So we're gonna go, like I said, we have our first position, second, um, I'm sorry, our root position, first, second. So, it all works the same for all chords. So if we start, we're gonna go second uh, position to first position to root position. 
And again, in C major, we're going to go second position to the first position of F, back to the C, to the root position of G, back to the C. And what it is, is you have And that covers the root and its two inversions on a piano. And it works that way for every single chord. Even though the notes will change, the premise does not change. If we take G, for instance, so we're going to have G, C, G, D, back to the G. And it works the same way. We're going to go from second inversion of G to first inversion of C, back to second inversion of G, to the root position of D, back to the G. Now if you notice in this one, when I play the D, I'm bringing in this F sharp, this black key, because it goes by the scale is the reason we're doing this. You can't just jump on the white notes and play these, and granted it would work, but it would not be in key. Now, before I confuse the situation anymore, this does work for, it doesn't matter where you play the set, it works. It just so happened that I did one in C major and then I did one in G major. But if I did this in minor, it would actually work the same way. If I did this, let's say in A minor, and I took the second inversion of A minor, and then I went, my next step would be the first inversion of D minor, back to the second inversion of A minor, then I would jump down to the root position of E minor, back to A minor. And it works, it doesn't matter where you do it on the piano. The notes will change, obviously, but the concept is still the same. We're going from the first, the second position to the first position, second position, root position, second position. And it doesn't matter where we do it. And like I said, I will do this again in C. Then we'll do it in G. We'll do it in A minor. And it works the same. So we're going from second position on our starting chord, which in this case we're going to say C. We're going to jump to the first position of F, and we're going to jump to the root position of G. The reason it's important to know this is because, like I said, I was going to do this on um, triads. And just watching the other videos that people are doing on triads and doing everything from the root position uh, on arpeggios, I'm sorry, uh, that's absolutely fine. And, and there's a time and a place for everything, and there's a time and a place for that. But you want to try to keep your hands centralized a little more like I played in the example, because I'm using these, these tones that are kind of helping me solidify my song. And like I said, on, on that particular instance, it was the E minor and then the D. Well, I'm sorry, the E and the D. And it just happens to be an E minor chord in that scale. That's why I said E minor. So that will help you kind of get started on your way, because when you start getting into arpeggios, you need to understand not all arpeggios are going to be like that. And the more you learn arpeggios and you learn these inversions, it's going to open such a big door for your piano playing. It is not going to be funny. It's going to be, it's just going to be, you're going to start seeing lights go off. And you're going to start understanding things just a little bit more. Because every time you open a door in the music, that one door you open will open 50 more doors. And that's hopefully what you do here is when you see this, it'll open a door. And then you'll get to a point where you're like, oh my God, I get it. I understand. And that's when things really start coming forward. So one more time, we're going to do second inversion C. First inversion F. Back to the C, root position G, back to the C. And real quick, before I took piano lessons, we had to do this in every single 
every single chord, I mean, a uh, note, we had to do this. So if we started at C, then we would go to C sharp. We would go to D, D sharp, E, F, and so on. And that's a good way to practice this, is do it in all the keys. And A, like I said, it will really drive home the tonality of the keys that you're playing in. You will always be able to hear that center of that key. When you're doing this in C, you can hear how both those chords just keep drawing back to the C, and that will help strengthen your ear as you move on to your music greatness, your music god dumb, uh, your music, you know, I always say guitar shredder. I guess piano shredder would be a good one. You can shred on a piano. Lots of people shred on a piano. So on your piano shredding, your piano shredding adventure, this will get you started going there. So learn the inversions. If you don't know the scales, go back into my page. Um, and there's tons of theory in there, tons of theory on the scales. But while you're doing this, also listen. If you're not sure about the key, listen to what you're playing. If you have a halfway decent ear, and I'm assuming you do or you would not be here, your ear will tell you when you're playing something wrong. Pay attention and listen, and that will start you on your journey. So I'm gonna do this. My next video on this will actually be on arpeggios. So we're going to wrap it up right there. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the question or comment section. Please subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share the video. If you do not like this video, give it a thumbs down. I honestly don't care. It's still traffic to the video. And ultimately, that's what makes a YouTube channel is traffic to the video. So if you like it, subscribe to the channel. And if you don't like it and you think I'm a dork, well, subscribe anyway, because chances are you're right. I am kind of a dork. So on that note, like the great Sammy Hagar says, if you miss the beat, you lose the rhythm and nothing falls into place. And for the love of God, whatever you do, rock on.